Hi everyone, welcome to Cap at Home. I am Miss Rachel and today I'm going to show you how to make these necklaces. What it is that we're actually making is a macrame net to hold a rock on a string and then we're going to tie those strings around our necks and make them necklaces. So we just need a few materials to get started. Those materials are rocks. So I picked these up on a walk. If you have like some really pretty rocks or something at home, you can use those. I got a couple different sizes to show you that um, it doesn't matter what size the rock is. You can make your necklace to fit whatever size you have. You will also need some string. I have mine pre-cut and each of my strings, I have four different strings here. Each one is arm's length long, so it's from one middle finger to the other middle finger, all the way stretched out. So that's about um, six feet of string for each one. And um, you'll also need some scissors. So if you want, you can add beads to yours, but you don't need to. It works fine without beads. So if you want to add beads, then you'll need beads. And something that might help you, depending on the kind of string that you're using, is a little bit of tape to help get those beads onto the string. So I'm going to clear all this off and show you how to get started. Hopefully not rip anything up. Okay. So, have that in the corner for our little example. Boom. Boom. Okay. So, I'm going to take my string first. And I have a couple of um, sets of strings so I can show you how to make this with the beads and without the beads. So, with the beads, I'm using this thinner string because it's a little bit easier to get the beads onto, and I'm gonna use my tape. You don't have to use tape, but it definitely helps if you're using something like yarn that kind of unravels. So I'm gonna just grab a tiny piece of tape and tape it onto the ends of my string. And that's gonna create an aglet, which is that little piece at the end of your shoelaces. And that just helps get the string through the bead. So I have my four strings taped up at the end. And I'm going to slide my bead on. And I'm going to try to find the middle of this string by finding the ends and holding the ends together like this. And then just sliding my hand down until I get the middle of the string. So if you're starting with a bead, that, this is what you need to do first. And then you'll tie a knot. Slide that off to the side. And tie a knot. To hold that bead in place. So if you are using beads and this is what you do first if you're not using any beads then we're just going to start with a knot and we're going to line up all of our strings try to find the ends of each piece got the ends on one side and then we're going to find the ends on the other side like that and then just slide our hands down till we find the middle ish of the string and then we're going to tie a knot right here loop pull cool so I'm gonna make sure that's tight cool so now I have two macrame nets started one with the bead and one without so if you're doing the bead thing and um, no matter which one you're doing, the next steps apply. So I'm going to use my colorful string because I think it will be easier to see um, what I'm saying because the strings will be color coded. So you'll need to just spread your strings out kind of like a spider. So all of the strings need to be spread. So that each one kind of has its own place 
and they're not tangled up. Okay. Cool. So this is what your work area should um, look like now. Okay, so now I am going to pair up the strings and tie knots in them to create my net. And what that means is I'm going to take these two strings and tie a knot. And I'm just choosing strings that are right next to each other. And you can arrange your strings in the spider legs however you want, but the ones that you tie together should be right next to each other. So I have my knot and I'm going to kind of push it into place and then pull it, pull the string tight so my knot is in there. So now I'm going to take these two because they're next to each other and do the same thing. Okay, and I'm going to push my knot kind of where I want it. And you kind of want your knots close to your big center knot because it's going to form the spaces that um, are in between the knots on your net. And you don't want your spaces to be too big if you have a small rock, because then your rock will fall out. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab these two. So doing this at home, you kinda need a lot of space to spread out your strings. So you could do this on the floor, or if you have a big table, you could do this on the table. It doesn't create a lot of mess, which is good, but you do need some space to spread your strings out so that you can get everything tied up in the order that it's supposed to be tied up in. So, And you want to use your fingers to move your knots close to the center because you don't want them to be too far away because the space in between these strings, which you'll see in a moment, is gonna become part of our net. So now, now that we have four knots, we're gonna spread our strings out again, like the spider legs. And it doesn't matter which way you spread your string. So like right now I have the red and the white this way. I could do it this way too. It doesn't matter as long as they're spread out because we are going to give our strings new partners. So we tied them up with one string in the first step. So now we're going to try tie them up with a different string in the next step. So we're going to kind of repeat the step that we just did, but with different strings. So this, um, well, it's black and purple right here was tied together. I'm not going to tie it together again. I'm going to tie one string to this red, and then I'm going to tie this string to this white because that is going to start to form our net. It's going to make sure that everything is connected so that we're creating a little pouch or baggie. So I'm tying these two together. And I'm going to make sure I'm pushing my knot close to the middle. Okay. Then I'm pulling it so that it tightens up there. Okay. Cool. And now I'm going to tie these two strings together because they're close to one another, but they haven't been tied together before. Okay. Cool. So if you have a smaller rock, you will want to tie your um, knots a little closer together. Mine are kind of far apart, but I have this huge rock that I'm putting in there. So that is something that you want to think about as you are working. Okay, one more. So at this point, your strings are starting to form a basket. So your um, 
So they won't lay flat on whatever you're working on, the table or the floor or wherever. They'll start to kind of bunch up and do some weird stuff. And if that's what's going on, then you got it right. You're doing the right thing. So I am going to take my rock and kind of just test it out a little bit. See, this is the center um, knot that I started with. Then my other ones are kind of forming around it. So it's looking pretty good. So I think because my rock is so big that I can do another set of knots and then I'll tie it off. But if you have a small rock, this may be all that you need to do. So if you have a smaller rock, just bear with us as we go through those last steps one more time. Okay. So now I'm going to spread my strings out so that I know which strings I'm tying to what, which strings have been tied together already. So there we go. Okay. So now I am going to pair these up again and make sure I'm not tying strings that were tied in this last round together. So I'm not going to tie these two together, but I could tie this red one back to that white one if I wanted to, but I don't want to because I'm thinking about how the colors are going to look as I tie them together. I think I want to keep tying different colors together more for um, how it will look rather than how it will function. So you can go ahead and tie some strings that were tied together the first time back down here together if you want, but you don't have to. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, let me know in the comments. We are always here to help you be a little more insightful because sometimes the way we might um, explain things might not be as clear as we would like it to be. So I'm gonna tie these two purples together here, or lavender. And I'm pushing my knot toward the middle, trying to make these spaces, you know, kind of medium size since I have a larger rock. But if you had a small rock, then you would push your knots closer together so that your net doesn't have holes that will allow your rock to fall out. So, ooh, 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 too close, too close for my rock. Ooh. There we go. Now I just have these two white strings to tie together. Okay. Pushing that knot where I want it. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna pull the strings on both sides and still kind of use my finger to keep it in place. Tighten it up. Okay, let's see. How does my huge rock fit in here? So you see it's not going on right now, but that's because I have to kind of make it fit. So. You might have to spread your net out over your rock to make it fit the way that you want. And if you do, that's good because that means it's less likely to just slip out. That means your rock is going to be secure. So now we have it in our net. And I'm just going to take all of these strings up here, grasp them at the top of my rock, and tie another knot and pull all of the tails through. Hi, Vernell. So, there we go. And now we have our rock in our net. So if you're doing this with beads, this is the point where you would add a bead to the top to get it here. So since I have all of these and I might want to put a bead on this whole thing, I would tape up all of these ends so that I could get the bead on there. 
So let's do that. I have to kind of comb these out. And I'm going to use just a little bit of my masking tape. And I'm actually going to make sure I'm getting all of these ends together because I really just want to get the bead on here. I'm not worried about the strings being even because I can even it out once the bead is on the strings. And once I put this tape on, I will probably have to cut it off of my string. So I want to make sure it's right at the end of the string. Okay, I think I have all of them. I'm going to twist them together. And then add my tape. I'm using masking tape because it's what I have closest to me right now. But if you just have clear tape or... Whatever kind of tape you have will probably work. This is a lot of yarn, so let's see if we can get a bead on here. Okay, smash that in there. Nope. So if you are having an issue like this, you can be patient and kind of force it on, or you can cut the tape off and just try to put it on a few strings. But I think I can get this on here. Let's see. Watching me struggle on live. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can. All right, well we can't, so I'm gonna show you how to deal with this if you are having a similar issue. So my strings are too thick for this. I'm gonna just snip this off, and instead of trying to put it on all of the strings, I'm just gonna take a couple, or hmm, a couple is two, so I'm just gonna take these two. Now I could add more tape, I might have to, but right now I'm just going to twist them together and see if I can feed it through my bead. There we go, we got it. So if you can't get your string um if you can't get your string through your bead, then just go ahead and use just a couple because we still have our bead on there and you can still see it. And if you want, you can add more beads to the other strings. So if you're adding a bead, then after this, after you have the bead on there, you will tie another knot to keep that bead in place. But that's not what I want to do with this one. I will actually split up my yarn. I'm going to split it up evenly for... Um, pieces and four pieces on each side and then I would just braid this all the way down so I would braid this side all the way down then braid this side but this is not a demonstration on braiding and that's going to take a little while but this is what it would look like if I actually braided it here. If you need some help with braiding let us know because I can definitely do a demonstration but the biggest part of this project we have completed. We've made our net for our rock and now we can rock our rock around our neck. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you did this with me, then make sure you drop a picture in the comments and we would love to see what you did. Um, reflect with us. Let us know what you liked, what you had trouble with, what we need to explain a little bit better. And then also remember to follow us like, share these posts. We love to get your engagement. And we are still asking people to email us pictures for an opportunity to be published in a Detroit-based magazine. So if you've created something with our Cap at Home videos, make sure you um, check the caption because there's an email address where you can send us pictures of what you've created and you have an opportunity to be a published artist. So that's pretty exciting, I think. But like I said, 
make sure you like, share, subscribe to CAP Detroit Community Arts Partnerships Detroit on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. That way you get notified when we go live. You'll get updates and news about what we're doing with our programs. And you can check out all of our videos with a ton of art projects for you to do at home. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Cap at Home. I'm Miss Rachel, and today we made macrame rock necklaces. Bye!